Hey, Kyle. So this is your first game back this year. Uh, last year you had a couple hundred fans in the stands, but this is your first game back with uh, with the full barn. Kind of take us through how, how what were the emotions, uh, getting all the fans back, and how it was to play in front of them. Yeah, it was great. Um, you know, even just going out in warm-ups and seeing people on the glass again and uh, having, you know, a lot of people in the building tonight and um, even just watching on uh, the first night, uh, opening night here, it was uh, awesome to have the fans back and, um, you know, hopefully we can get back on track and uh, give, them, give them a lot more to cheer about here coming up. So you've got a, you know, you're coming out tonight, you just, there's a high goalie that you're skating up there against and it's tough to get the puck, just a tough night. Uh, mentally, how do you really stick to your game plan and just don't give in to the frustration? Um, I think it was tough. Uh, we kind of were caught caught by surprise there to start the game. Uh, we just weren't really ready. And uh, their D do a good job of, of clearing pucks on our dumps. We kind of weren't able to sustain anything. And yeah, their goalie played well, but I don't think we really got into uh, into his face at all. We didn't make it hard for him. So it's a couple of things we need to work on. All right, and so you're a guy that this team relies on to uh, provide some leadership. If you've been in this league for five, six years now, bit of a rough start for the Griffins coming out of the gate here. What, uh, what do you got to do? What do you got to say to some of these young players here to kind of keep the focus, keep on track and don't let this rattle you? I think just uh, lead by example, really. Um, the older guys, everyone in that room is going to have to just step up. Uh, starts with practice. Um, you know, there's been a lot of talk and, you know, when you lose a couple in a row, it's obviously, uh, you know, you're going over a lot of video and you're doing a lot of different things and everyone's trying to over communicate. But I think just leading by example, starting in practice tomorrow and uh, heading into the weekend, we just need to be difference makers. All the older guys do. Thanks a lot, Kyle. Yep. Thanks. Next uh, up. Say- Patrick Williams from HL.com. Sorry about that. Uh, just a couple for me. Uh, Kyle, uh, you know, from your vantage point in the stands before you came back and then now being on the ice, uh, are there, is there anything different now that you see, uh, you know, from what you saw, you know, kind of at a distance of this team? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like things obviously happen a lot faster on the ice. When you're up top, you can kind of see the, the, play, the plays develop and everything. Um, I think the... The thing is, every team that we've played is very different. Um, I mean, from Milwaukee to Manitoba to these guys tonight. Uh, Manitoba and these guys are just completely different teams. Uh, we just have to be able to play play different games. Um, and and obviously, you know, capitalize on, on the power play and special teams. I mean, everyone always says special teams wins in this league. And uh, I think it's the truth. I think they had maybe two power play goals tonight, maybe one. But, uh, you know, we, we didn't get on the board. Um, and I think if, you know, if we get one, in the second period or, you know, before that, I think it's a different game for sure. Um, so I think that's one thing we, we can focus on and, and just sticking together. Um, so it's a long season. So, um, you know, just sticking together is kind of uh, the biggest thing early on here. And you mentioned that they're D really strong on the clears. Um, this is a team you're going to see a lot of this year. Uh, what do they do that, that, you know, made some successful and, and sort of what can you do as a team to impose your style on them and not have to just react to them. Yeah. Um, so the way they play defensively is just, uh, you know, if there's a, a dump in, you know, their forwards are, are knowing that the D is going to be flipping it out. So it's a, it's a predictable style for their forwards. They can kind of, you know, stay under our D, but fly the zone a bit. And uh, once we get stalled in the D zone, they have five guys, you know, kind of swarm you in the corner there. And uh, we weren't able to relieve the pressure at all, really. Um, so they had quick breakouts, so they weren't, wasting any energy in the D zone. And uh, obviously they have a very skilled offensive group. So once they get in the O zone, they kind of can can wheel and deal and, and wear you down a bit. But, um, you know, that's where we kind of need to relieve pressure as soon as we get in the zone, beat them to pucks on the four check and uh, make sure they don't touch them first and, and keep our dumps away from the goalie. Great, thank you. This Chicago team is a team you're going to see a lot this season. What did you see tonight that gave you a lot of trouble with them? Well, I, I think they're a, a very aggressive team in what they do. I think they don't mess around with pucks in their end. If you watch closely, they go back on pucks. All they throw just back out in the neutral zone. Now they're forechecking either in the neutral zone or they're just getting pucks behind, and they've got some big bodies. And when they establish body position and pressure, they're quick to pounce. They did a better job um, 
getting first on loose pucks and did a better job of getting second and outnumbering on loose pucks in the O zone and in the D zone. And I thought, to be quite frank, we were just, you know, whether or not they're a fast team, a big team, a, a heavy team, a slow team, a, doesn't matter when you don't compete. We were not competitive at all in the first period. That leads into my next question. Uh, you know, aside from being uh, more competitive, what can you do to impose your will on them so that they're reacting to you rather than the other way around? We could probably show up at seven o'clock instead of eight o'clock. Okay, that's all I got. All right, next up, Andrew Rinaldi, Field Pass Hockey. Coach, kind of building on what Pat alluded to, uh, you know, Chicago, they came out of the gate and they were they were flying and it took a little while for you guys to respond. Um, how do you differentiate when you build a game plan in the pregame and the morning practice and when to stick to that game plan to when you decide that, all right, it's it's time to change it up. This isn't working. We really we need to find some momentum here. Well, I don't think you ever hit the panic button. We're at, this is our fifth game of the year. And, you know, we still have firm belief in the group we have here. Um, but I don't care what group you have. If, if you don't show up, you don't work, you don't compete for 60 minutes, especially against a good hockey team, you're not going to win. I don't care how good you are. So uh, we could be as talented as, you know, we be the most talented team in the league, which we're not. And I think we have to realize that, that we need to rely on, on our work ethic a little bit more. Uh, and our competitiveness, our, our tenacity, uh, a hell of a lot more than just thinking we can show up and rely on our power play to score. Would you like to see the game kind of open up a little more offensively? I mean, we know that the Griffins like to kind of go from play from the net out, you like to play defense first and kind of build on from there. But would you, and with, uh, you know, it's, it's been a little rough going with, with the goal scoring early on here, or again, you want to just stick to your game plan? Well, you know, we, we certainly could uh, just go run and gun and try and trade chances, but you know, we <laughs> look at the game tonight. We, we didn't defend well and we didn't generate anything. I mean, if you take care of your end first defensively, you're not spending time in your end. You're, you're not expounding energy so that when you do get out of your end, after being in there for 35, 40 seconds, you have to just flip the puck in or chip it in and change. So you can't sustain or generate any offense when you're not playing sound away from the puck. So I, I think that we've got to realize that. I think uh, the first period, it looked like we had never played D zone coverage before, which which is frustrating. And some things we talked about specifically the, that, that happened that period is disappointing from a coach's point of view. And then kind of to build on that, I feel – there were a lot of times where the Wolves were just beating you guys to pucks. Um, kind of build on that, like, where do you believe your compete level is? And when it comes to practice, how do you work on, on getting these guys hungrier and just wanting it more when it comes to some of these puck battles? Well, it, it, the old adage, can you teach heart? Can, can you teach uh, the willingness to, to want to block a shot, to want to get your nose dirty? You know, you either have it in you or you don't. We can try our best to 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 get it out of you, but I think as a as a player, you either you either want to do the job or you don't. Plain and simple. All right, last up for me, um, Joe Valeno is a guy who started off very hot offensively, and kind of with the with the rest of the team, it's it's cooled down a bit. How do you how do you take some of the lessons that these games offered to a player that's that's trying to to break in at the next level here? Joe's no different than any other guy on our team. It's just the the consistency. You can't be good for two games and be average for one, then be okay for another, and then be really good for two more. Uh, anyone can be really good for a couple games, and and you can have a pretty good career doing that down in the minors, but. The difference of, of dominating this league and getting to the next is doing it on an everyday, every shift basis. And, you know, I'm, I'm not going to alienate Joe. He's not the only one. We've got lots of other guys in there that got to bring more to the table, plain and simple.